In the wake of Harris's loss, a lot of us are wrestling with the what went wrong question. Not all of us. An awful lot of us seem to think her loss has suddenly validated any statement they ever made along the lines of Kamala Harris will lose if she doesn't do X. And for those people, there's nothing to wrestle with. They, they, they already agree with themselves. But for the rest of us, we're doing some serious searching, desperately trying to figure out where the leak is so that we can plug it in time for the midterms. Now, to be honest, I, I think a lot of people are probably making a bit too much of that. I don't necessarily think the Democrats need to completely overhaul their national strategies, that the economics strongly favored the non-incumbent party, Biden was an unpopular incumbent, and the Senate map heavily favored Republicans. Yes, there were concerning red shifts in blue states, but if Republicans had run a halfway competent candidate, I don't think any Democratic candidate or campaign strategy could have succeeded. That being said... The fact that we could lose to somebody as profoundly incompetent, incoherent, and insane as Donald Trump after America saw what he did with the place is shocking enough that it does demand answers. And the answer that a lot of people have landed on is one of narrative. They managed to put together a more compelling narrative than we did. And that's true. Our narrative was that the economic playing field is unfairly tilted towards the rich, and if we can tackle a few serious issues with regards to health costs and the cost of home ownership, we can make real strides towards rectifying some of those structural inequalities. Well, I, I guess, I, honestly, more often our narrative was, have you fucking seen the other guy? But in terms of the positive case for our side, that's pretty much the narrative the Harris campaign was selling. Trump's narrative, of course, was all about fear and hate. The others from less civilized places were coming to America to take your jobs and eat your pets, and the woke lefties weren't going to stop them because they were too busy trying to turn your kids into gay trans communists. And when you set aside the racism and the lies, which far too many Americans were prepared to do, that is the far more compelling narrative. After all, structural inequalities are hard to change, gradually or otherwise. But if the problem is scary brown people... Well, you can solve that problem just by getting rid of the scary brown people, can't you? That problem is tangible. That makes it fixable. So naturally, a lot of people on our side are saying that the solution is finding a better narrative. And while I will concede that we probably could use a more compelling narrative, I also want to temper our expectations in that department. Because if trying to sell atheism for a decade has taught me anything, it's that a narrative that is anchored by the truth can never be as compelling as a narrative that isn't. I mean, it's no mystery why, right? Evolution by natural selection. If I put a factual narrative out into the world, that narrative can evolve to be more convincing or compelling, sure, right? Somebody else might think of a more memorable way to phrase it or a more approachable analogy. And given enough time, we might actually learn more and be able to add meaningfully to that narrative in more compelling ways. But it'll always be limited by the truth. The truth will act like an anchor forever limiting the appeal of that narrative. But you can't hook an anchor to bullshit, can you? Bullshit can conform to any shape. It can fit into any mold. And there's nothing you can throw into a pile of bullshit that doesn't belong there. It was already bullshit anyway. So if I put a false narrative into the world, it can grow in any direction it wants to grow, unfettered by anything but the imagination and agenda of the people sharing it. And without any conscious entity even directing it, it will evolve into its most compelling form because the most compelling additions are going to stick and the least compelling ones will fall away. And what that means is that we're doomed to either forever lag behind our opponents in terms of narrative strength or resort to lies of our own. And if we let ourselves be convinced that it's all about narrative, we're liable to do exactly that. We're liable to exaggerate and lean into hyperbole and allow our rhetoric to outpace our reality. And I already see some of that. Look, given what we heard on the campaign trail, I think we're in very real danger of fascism. But we're not there yet. From what I've seen of his campaign picks, I think we're in real danger of oligarchy. And as much as people like to throw that term around, we're not there yet. Right. So every time we use one of those terms to describe the present situation, we weaken those terms. We're robbing them of their power of literalism. And to be honest, I think to some degree, our tendency to do that enabled Trump's second term. We were too grandiose in our claims about how thoroughly he was going to fuck our country the last time. And now our warnings ring hollow to a lot of voters. 
Now, granted, our warnings were pretty much spot on, right? Trump's handling of the COVID crisis was a powerful vindication of every claim of dangerous ineptitude we ever muttered. And the families that were forever separated by his border policies will argue that no condemnation of their inhumanity would be an exaggeration. And that's correct. Right. But if we issue the most dire possible warning, we've created a situation where, number one, we can't ramp it up. But number two, and perhaps more importantly, Trump needs only to stop short of that prediction to thwart us. If we say, you know, democracy can't survive another Trump term, then any level of corruption short of ending elections will turn out to be a vindication for those who accuse us of embellishment, who dismiss us because of embellishment. And this works in both directions, right? Because if we allow our narrative to outpace reality on the other end, we end up making all these grand promises that are impossible to deliver on. We end up simplifying problems just so that we can offer up simple solutions. And we reach a point where, for example, the many very real and substantive liberal victories under the Biden administration barely leave a ripple in the pond. Look, I don't know. I, I, I hate to be this honest about it, but I don't know that the truth can win against a compelling lie. Everything in my experience as an atheist and skeptic leads me to doubt that. But if we can win, it's going to be because people recognize the inherent value in truth. And if we're going to claim that mantle, we need to be ready to carry all the burdens it comes with.